Hello dear students, welcome to the course of Engineering Thermodynamics. Myself, Mihir Mistri, Assistant Professor from Mechanical Department of LG Institute of Engineering and Technology. So today we are going to continue our session on second law of thermodynamics. So we have already discussed about Clausius statement, Kelvin Planck statement and PMM 1, 2, right? So today we are going to discuss about the equivalence of Kelvin Planck and Clausius statement. Now the basic fundamental meaning of equivalence is you are comparing the both the statements and they both statements are representing the same thing. That is the main agenda for discussing this topic. Okay, so let us do that. But before doing so, we will recapitulate the Kelvin Planck and Clausius statement. So as you might be aware, what is the Clausius statement? So second law of thermodynamics, Clausius statement is simple. It is impossible for a cyclic device to transfer heat from low body temperature to high body temperature without any work input. Right? So that means, that means you should have the work input if you want to transfer heat from low body temperature to high body temperature. Okay? So that is the Clausius statement. And the next one is Claus Kelvin Planck statement. Right? So in Kelvin Planck statement, very simple, the statement is what? It is impossible for a cyclic engine or cyclic device to exchange heat with single reservoir only and produce neat work. That means what sir? That means simple. If you have an engine, then it is impossible that that engine will transfer or exchange heat with only single reservoir. It should exchange a heat with two reservoirs, right? High temperature and low temperature reservoir. What is the meaning of reservoir, source, sink that has already been discussed, right? So refer the previous lectures. Okay, so today we are going to move further. So let us discuss the equivalence. Now remember students, in equivalence, there are two topics. The very first topic is that if you violate the Clausius statement, then it will lead to the violation of Kelvin Planck statement. That is the first case. And the second case is reverse. That is, if you violate the Kelvin Planck statement, then it will lead to the violation of Clausius statement. Clear? So that is the uh, thing about the theory that you have to discuss parallelly two cases. Okay? Many times it, in examination only one particular case is also asked. For example, explain that violation of Clausius statement will lead to the violation of Kelvin Planck statement. So at that time you have to only explain the, that particular case. But if it is asked that like this, that explain the equivalence of Kelvin Planck and Clausius statement. So at that time you have to explain or write both the cases together. Clear? So let us discuss that. So for the discussion, as you can see on the screen, we have the very first case that is violation of Clausius statement will lead to the violation of Kelvin Planck statement. So refer the diagram that is shown over here on the screen. So as you can see in the diagram, we have two reservoirs that is hot reservoir at temperature T1 and cold reservoir at temperature T2. And in between these two reservoir, we have heat pump that is operating at T2 reservoir, right? So this heat pump will do what? It will extract Q2 or Q1 amount of heat, right? This heat pump will extract Q1 amount of heat from the reservoir which is at temperature T2. And it will transfer the same amount of heat Q1 to the high temperature reservoir. Initially, we have assumed that this heat pump is violating the Clausius statement. Now, if it is violating the Clausius statement, that means it should not consume any work. Okay, that means it should not consume any work in order to transfer the heat from low body temperature to high body temperature. That is why as you can see in the diagram I have written W is equal to 0. Right? So it is already violating the Clausius statement. Okay? So keep that thing in your mind. Now, what will happen? Further, we have also one more heat engine. So heat engine will do what? The function of heat engine is to transfer or to produce the network with the help of heat supply. Okay? So as you can see over here, this heat engine will receive Q1 amount of heat from T1 temperature 
it will produce W net amount of work and it will reject due to amount of heat to the cold reservoir at T2. Clear? So that is how this heat pump and heat engine is working. Now what we are supposed to discuss? We are supposed to discuss the uh, statement equivalence. That means here we are accepting initially that one statement is already violated. So we have to prove that that the second statement will also violate. Okay, so as you can see in the figure or diagram that heat pump is already violating the loss statement because it is transferring the heat from low body temperature to high body temperature without any work input. So that is why as you can see, observe that at the outlet of the heat pump, the heat rejection that is Q1 is same as the inlet of the heat pump. That means at the inlet also you have Q1 and at the outlet also you have Q1 for the heat pump because W is equal to zero students. That is easy to understand. Now let us understand, just for a fraction of a second, let us assume that uh, at the moment, as soon as you will reject the Q1 amount of heat to hot reservoir, at the same moment, same amount of heat is extracted by the heat engine. Okay, so for example, let us say the value of Q1 is 1 kilo joule. Okay, so let us say at one second, at each one second, you are rejecting 1 kilo joule to the hot reservoir. And at the same second, that 1 kilo joule is extracted back by heat engine. Okay, now that means what students, that means ultimately we don't need the hot reservoir, right? What we can do is we can connect the outlet of heat pump to the inlet of the heat engine, right? Agree or not, right? Because as you can see over here, I'm repeating again, what will happen at, at a moment for one second, let us say, for example, uh, one kilojoule of heat is rejected to the hot reservoir and th at the same very moment, you are extracting one kilojoule from the hot reservoir by the heat engine, okay? so. This both things are occurring simultaneously. One kilojoule is uh, extracted and one kilojoule is supplied. Okay, so it is just like I am uh, taking out five rupee note from your top pocket or shirt pocket, and I am putting the five rupee note in your pant pocket. Okay, so your net uh, borrowing is zero. Okay, so that is the same case over here also. Okay, so now let us understand that here if you neglect the hot reservoir then what will happen simple whatever the heat is rejected by the heat pump that is q1 that is directly you can supply to the heat engine because same heat is extracted or same heat is consumed by the heat engine simultaneously so directly you can connect this q1 to the inlet of this heat engine clear now what will happen now here heat engine is doing some work and it is rejecting some heat cube. Now let us think both the system combined as together, as a single system. So now what will happen? Just we have directly, we have eliminated the hot reservoir. So we have directly converted or directly supplied the outlet of heat pump to the inlet of heat engine. Now this combination of heat pump and heat engine is constructing a device such that if you observe closely over here, now we don't have hot reservoir, we have only one cold reservoir. Now observe, what will happen? The combination of heat pump and heat engine is constructing a device which is exchanging heat with only single reservoir. Okay, and still it is producing some work W net that is equal to Q1 minus Q2. Okay, so that is not possible. Because if you recall the Kelvin Planck statement, then Kelvin Planck told us that you cannot construct a device operating in a cycle which can transfer the heat with single reservoir and also can produce network. Okay, so that means if we do so, then we have a combination of two devices acting as a single device which will transfer or exchange heat with only cold reservoir though it will produce some network. So that is what ultimately violation of Kelvin Planck statement. So that is why I have already told you the right. What is the title? The title is violation of Clausius statement will lead to the violation of Kelvin Planck statement. Right. So that is proved over here. Very easy to understand. Right, everyone. So keep that thing in your mind. Now, 
let us move to the next uh, discussion that is violation of kelvin planck statement leads to violation of clausius statement so let us understand that also very simple as you can see in the diagram we have two reservoir that is hot reservoir at temperature t1 cold reservoir at temperature t2 now in this first we will assume that we have a device which is already violating the kelvin planck statement so as you can see what was the kelvin planck statement violation pmm2 was the kelvin planck statement violation right you can recall that so here on the left hand section or left hand side we have a heat engine which is a device operating in a cycle which exchanges heat with only single reservoir that is t1 okay though it is producing net one w and w is equal to q1 okay because you have heat rejection q2 is equal to 0 and kelvin planck told us that you cannot construct a device for which q2 is equal to 0 but let us assume that such device is produced that means this device is violating the kelvin planck statement so that is q2 is equal to 0 that means your net work done which is produced w is equal to q1 clear everyone okay now what will happen we have also one heat pump which is operating such that it will transfer the heat from low body temperature that is at t2 to high body temperature that is at t1 so it is extracting q2 amount of heat from the t2 reservoir and it is giving q1 plus q2 amount of heat to the hot temperature reservoir t1 okay now the question might be in your mind sir how this q1 plus q2 is there simple as you can see in the for the heat pump see this heat pump is not violating anything right now it is working as conventional way okay you know that what is the conventional way of working of heat pump the conventional way is to you should apply the work okay and due to that work the device will transfer the heat from low body temperature to high body temperature right so here also as you can see you are applying the work w which is equivalent to q1 okay so w is equal to q1 that much work is supplied to this heat pump and this heat pump will extract q2 amount of heat from the low body so now this q2 and this q1 both will add it so as a resultant you will have q1 plus q2 at the outlet of heat pump okay so that is very easy to understand right students okay now let us understand what will happen over here also so as of now you have understood that how this all system is working okay so now let us assume or consider both system as combined and acting as a single system okay so now if you observe and just visualize try to visualize that both system are operating as a single system then what will happen let us understand that so here if you observe then q1 amount of heat is extracted by heat engine and same amount of heat q1 is given back to the hot reservoir by heat pump okay so ultimately that is what you are exchanging or you are extracting q1 heat from t1 temperature for example let us say this is the hot high temperature reservoir so the, from this high temperature reservoir or hot reservoir at 1 second you are extracting 1 kJ heat and at the same time you are giving it back to 1 kJ of heat so that means what ultimately the net heat transfer will be zero right so here if you combine both the system that means what your q1 will effect will be neglected automatically because whatever amount of q1 you are extracting from the temperature t1 reservoir same amount you are giving back to the temperature reservoir t1 okay so ultimately your q1 heat transfer can be neglected over here right so now if you combine both the system then both the system will act as a single system which will transfer q2 amount of heat from low temperature reservoir to the q2 amount of heat to the high temperature reservoir okay you are extracting q2 amount of heat from t2 body temperature and you are supplying the same q2 amount of heat to the high body temperature t1 okay because your q1 is automatically balanced right the net effect of q1 heat transfer is zero so that is why you can assume or consider that you have a combination of a device two devices working as a single device such that it is transferring heat from low body temperature 
टू हाई बॉडी टेम्परेचर नाउ इफ यू टेक कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ बोथ दिस डिवाइस डू वी हैव एनी वर्क इनपुट फ्रॉम आउटसाइड और एक्सटर्नल सोर्स नो सो दैट मीन्स your device is such that it is transferring heat from low body temperature to high body temperature without any work input so if such device is existing then it will violate the clausius theorem so that means what here initially we have assumed that kelvin clark statement is violated so that led us to what violation of clausius theorem clear so what is the funda the funda is simple spread Kelvin Planck and Clausius statement both are same thing. Both are representing the same concept. But if you violate one concept, then second concept will also violate simultaneously. Okay, or rather, I should use the word same statement. Okay, or both the statement concept is same, but the statements are different. Okay, so if you violate one statement, then automatically second statement will also violate. so that is the funda of explaining this theorem okay so now let us move further now the next topic is very simple that is causes of irreversibility okay so now let us understand what is irreversibility or what is reversibility okay so reversibility means what simple students if we uh, do one process or any process in that process if you can reverse all the things right so let us say for example from a to b we are moving from a to b point and if we can move from b to a by following the same path then it can be said as reversible process right but that is not the case with actual life processes right so whenever we have finite difference between two potential then it will cause irreversible process okay let me explain to you it in a simple way okay for example let me take my two hands okay let us say this hand is at 30 degree celsius and this hand is at 31 degree celsius now i am keeping this two hands in contact so what will happen obviously from high temperature body to low temperature body heat will start flowing okay so 31 to 30 heat will start flowing okay and after certain time thermodynamic equilibrium will be achieved so when you have thermodynamic equilibrium at that time you can say that if you do any process that will be reversible but as soon as i will break the thermodynamic equilibrium the irreversibility will start simple way let me explain again for example if i will increase this temperature to 35 and keeping this as 30 so now this is 35 and this is 30 so i have 5 degree difference so my irreversibility will increase according to 5 degree celsius if i have difference of 10 degree then irreversibility will be more than the 5 degree irreversibility if i will have the difference of 100 degree between these two then that much larger irreversibility will occur okay so what is the concept the concept is if you have the thermodynamic equilibrium then the reversibility will occur and if you are disturbing the thermodynamic equilibrium by any means that means thermally chemically or mechanically your irreversibility will come into picture okay so that is the concept of irreversibility now what are the causes of irreversibility so causes of irreversibility are of two types the very first thing is lack of equilibrium during the process so that is the first cause and second cause is involvement of dissipative effect okay so we will first understand what is the lack of equilibrium during the process so if you recall the first chapter during that we have already discussed thermodynamic equilibrium so thermodynamic equilibrium constitutes of three things that is mechanical chemical and thermal equilibrium so if we have any potential difference that it means for example if we have two systems and between this two system we have for example pressure difference so that will cause irreversibility due to pressure effect if we have temperature difference then that will cause irreversibility due to thermal effect if we have chemical difference that will cause irreversibility due to chemical equilibrium so that means as soon as you don't have if any one or combination of more than one equilibrium then that will cause the irreversibility 
okay so the condition for reversibility is what the condition for the reversibility is your system two systems should be in constantly thermodynamic equilibrium that means what sir that means if you want irreversibility or reversibility complete reversibility then no process no real life process will occur in nature that is the fact think logically okay so that is the reason that in nature any process that we are observing around us those all processes are irreversible okay so reversible process is a hypothetical concept okay so keep that thing in your mind now now what is the other effect or what is the other cause for irreversibility the other cause is involvement of dissipative effect now let us understand what is the meaning of dissipative effect dissipative effect means what simple students that if you do any kind of work or any operation due to which internal energy of the system is raising or internal energy of the system is changing that kind of operation will be called as dissipative effect for example if we take a water inside a vessel and if we are rotating the stirrer inside it that means what we are doing some shaft work or pedal work inside the water okay so that work is transferred into energy okay so the internal energy of the water present in the vessel will increase right so that is known as dissipative effect dissipation means what whatever you are doing that will be ultimately converted into change in energy and change in energy that means what ultimately change in temperature because you know that internal energy is function of temperature okay so that is the thing you should consider now here different dissipative effects are there that is friction turbulence magnetic hysteresis right electric resistance those all are the different kinds of dissipative effect so if any of this or combination of this are present then that will be known as the dissipative effect and because of that you will not have reversibility or because of that you will have irreversibility okay so keep that thing in your mind see the logic of uh, presence of dissipative effect is very simple let me explain to you for example let us take example of friction how friction is dissipative effect as i have already told you if you rotate the stirrer then the stirrer blades will be in constant contact of the water molecules okay so between the water molecule and stirrer blade there will be some friction and due to the friction what will happen because of the friction the water temperature will rise and due to that as soon as you will rotate the stirrer the friction will Uh, come into picture and because of that the temperature of the water will increase and because of that its internal energy will increase because of that the water's thermodynamic equilibrium equilibrium will disturb and that due to that the irreversibility will come in picture okay so that is how this dissipative effect will work okay so you can take example of other uh, dissipative effects also okay so that is all for today Thank you.